Now, Mike, I don't know if you've picked up on this, but one of the things that John's obsessed with is how much money he makes at each show, how much Mm -hmm. money he pays other people, how much money the club gives him. The Monday after we got back, Artie, knowing how big he was, said, John, I'd like to do more gigs with you, but I'd like to get paid more. So I agreed and started paying twenty five hundred a weekend. I was getting like ten grand a gig, so I usually net about four thousand for myself. Eventually, as Artie got bigger, he and I split the money. Then we'd split it, but the agent fee came out of my share. But why not? Artie had become so huge, it was the right thing to do. Yeah, I decided. You know what? Maybe I should pay him what he deserves, and he sounds reluctant <laughs> yeah. about it too. He's like, oh, yeah. "God damn it!" Yeah. Since he was the draw and the funny one, yeah. maybe he should get the equal amount. He brought the people there and made it feel like the price of admission was worth it. Maybe <laughs> I should be paying this guy some of the money that we make. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. The well, he is, you know, is insane. He to really me. probably would have been a very successful agent because that's what they like to do. You that's know? true. The, the comedy way- agent. The way John talks is very, mu- very specific. And this is something that happened 15 years ago. No, no, it'd be 20 years ago yeah. now or, or yeah. more. Yeah. And he's, he's sitting there going, and then we made this amount. And then I paid him this amount, which mm-hmm. netted me this amount. And then mm-hmm. why do you even right. remember that? He, he <laughs> right. thinks it's flexing. Dude, I don't know much money we made in Detroit. I, yeah. I honestly don't know, but to, to John, I didn't know we made money. <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We lost money. Uh, that's what you. That said. Airbnb <laughs> cost twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> that's what I thought. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you read my book, and then we did a show in Detroit, and I paid no one. <laughs> the WATP <Yeah>. story. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Yeah, comedians are much more interested in, you know, who died, who killed, yeah. and and what fucked up shit happened during the show. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That, John never talks about any of that stuff, no. unless it's like an audience that he's pissed off with or something he wants to fight, right. which we'll find out right. about from Philly <laughs> in a little bit. But before Wait, that... So a fight in Philly? Shocking. I know. I know. Never, never heard of before. <laughs> but before we do that, let's talk about shitting. Let's start, let's start the shit stories. One time we were doing the improv in Ontario, California. We were in the green room with Sam Simon and his Playboy Playmate girlfriend was there. It was about time for me to go on, and as usual, I had to take a quick shit. The toilet was right next to where everyone was hanging. Keep in mind, the green room was small. I went to the bathroom and let a quick meat missile out of my ass. Boom! I got up washed my hands, and walked out to see the playmate completely disgusted. I said hi, and she reluctantly shook my hand. I love that story. (laughs) What a great story, John. (laughs) They call him Mr. Foom. (laughs) I think the only untrue part is that he washed his hands. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not buying that one. He probably let the water run for a minute so people can hear it. (laughs) I'm washing. (laughs) One of those things, yeah. (laughs) Sing of the alphabet. <laughs> but what is interesting about that story? So they're sitting back there with Sam Simon's chick, who's hot, mm-hmm. and she's grossed out by John. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's his road story from LA. And he has—he's not taking away <laughs> any of that. He is proud of this for some fucking oh, yeah. reason. Oh yeah, he's very proud of yeah. himself. Right. As usual, yeah, he's with. I had to shit. Great. Yeah. He's with a very successful guy who has interesting story on his own. Sam Simon yeah. was, a, was oh, a yeah. fascinating guy, and and to be able to hang out with that guy, I'm sure, had he asked, there would have been great stories and insight, and plus a hot girl. But mm-hmm. uh, and a show that he did. But like you said, all he's talking about is eh, I took a shit. That's a very good point, Mike, and one that I even just like. Oh yeah, Sam created The Simpsons. Like he's, yeah. he's got some yeah. side, didn't he have a part in Cheers too or something? Like he's his track record he, he, is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I he's, mean, yeah, I, I I did meet him. We out, actually with Artie went out to lunch once. Yeah, fascinating guy. Yeah. I mean, really cool guy. Who, I mean, he's a little who weird. paid for lunch. <laughs> 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 Sam's a little weird with the fucking animal rescue shit, but you know I'll let that slide <laughs> if that's what girls like. I I get it. I understand. Right. But John's only interesting story was him taking a shit near Sam Simon and, and his girlfriend. Offending everyone. Yeah. He's right. Like, yeah. Okay. That's well, it's me. a power thing. What 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 more of a power thing is it than than offend someone by your stench, by your Oh yeah. It's like it's like Mar- he literally I marked his this. territory. He yes. marked his territory. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, that's a good point because he talks about that quite a bit in these chapters. In fact, I'll skip ahead to um, this is a chapter called Jet Pew. <laughs> and when he said that, I was just like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Apparently, he was on an airplane oh, God. with uh, Artie and some other guys. Oh, I think this was Jim Florentine and him were a little mm-hmm. gassy. So we started farting incessantly. We were laughing our asses off as passengers were getting winded. Passengers were getting winded? That's not what that means. No. Why didn't his editor point that out to him? Like, no, getting winded is not getting farted on. Well, I still think there's no editor, and I I actually think he was (laughs) trying to be clever there. We were laughing our asses off. (laughs) By the way, I I have new ISOs. Oh, me too. Yeah. And he laughed his ass off. (laughs) I'm collecting all of the pronouns. We've got I, we, they, Mm -hmm. but it's never you. We laughed our asses off. (laughs) Yeah, he, everyone's laughing their asses off all the time in this guy's you life. You might be it's right about not having an amazing. editor, because I've noticed a lot of uh, of typos. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah I don't I'll, have the I'll book. Lose. All and right. here's the thing. If you're on a plane with Florentine, he, he loves to fart on planes. But what when John would do it, I guarantee you, here's what John would do. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing attention to it, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Jim would, Jim would fart and do this. Yeah, and then the, guy, the person would 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 uh, turn and he go. Yeah, I, I can picture John trying else. to make eye contact with people around him, going. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> no, Florentine would fart and then like just point at somebody else, like this guy farted here. Right, which makes it funny because you're pranking somebody else. Yeah, funnier. Still, don't yeah. fart, don't fart on the airplane, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jim, but please. Don't how do you think Florentine got where he was today by farting <laughs> and taking up de- upper deckers? That's how he did it. I want to go to Hawaii <laughs> and fart on the plane. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right, so now Modi, who John explains has a very big nose, this is explained multiple times <laughs> in the book. Apparently, he got wind. Of these farts. Modi was asleep with his huge, giant nose facing the air. I blasted a long, loud, pungent bit of Puerto Rican noxious gas out of my ass. I watched Modi as his huge, vacuum-like nose inhaled the stench. I slowly watched his beak-like nose twitch. Then his eyes slowly opened in horror, and he screamed, Oh, my God, you people are animals! Jim and I couldn't stop laughing. Wait, Jim and you were laughing your asses off? Huh? So he shits in the toilet. Yeah. He farts out his ass. Does he think yeah. he's getting paid by the word? <laughs> well, that's why they're usually laughing their asses off. Yeah. Right. They can't just be laughing. That's not enough words right there. I love this idea that the guy has a... The guy's a big nose, and so he's he's yeah. awoken by farts. And it's funny that this came up right after we just did that Opie episode, yeah. where Opie woke himself up with his fart and thought it was the funniest thing that's ever happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he went straight to his camera and just started podcasting. I can't imagine yeah. I would have a lot of friends if I talked about waking up from farts yeah. very often. Yeah. I don't know, but if if somebody posted that paragraph John just said on Twitter, uh, it would uh, somebody would retweet saying, "Say you're an anti semite without saying you're an anti semite." Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. how many times can you say "big nose hook"? Yeah. You know, he, he didn't say "hook," but close enough. Oh no, no, no! He he, he implied it quite a <laughs> he bit. Implied it. Yeah, yeah. Bold business. <laughs> you know what these dumb Jews hate is my farts. <laughs> I'll rewrite that. Well, Hold they on. hate any kind of gas, <laughs> don't they? Am I right, folks? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this chapter, Jet Pew, culminates with this. We unloaded another beefy barrage, and finally the flight attendant got on the loudspeaker and said, Look, I know what you guys are up to. If you don't stop, we're going to land this plane and have you removed from the aircraft. Oh, the pain of having to hold in what we had left until we landed. It was one of my favorite fart stories of all time. Wow. Yeah. That one cracked the top ten? <laughs> yeah. It must be pretty good then. <laughs> He's saving the rest for the next book. He's got right. a lot of funny <laughs> fart stories, so yeah. that's impressive right there. The flight attendant yeah. had to announce right. to the plane, yeah. could the guy stop farting? Yeah. We're on to you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to call Florentine and ask if that's true. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm making a note. Okay. I have uh, I have Jim on uh, the creep off with us on Wednesday. We're oh, doing a bonus okay. show, right. and Jim's well, going to be on there. So, yeah. so I might want to run some of these yeah, clips definitely. by him, too, because yeah. there's a lot of weird yes. Florentine stuff in here. So let's get back to the storytelling. Mm-hmm. 
because one of the things that's interesting, we always point out all the time that John uses more words than he needs to, like he's trying to pad mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But then other times he tells a story without telling the story. Right. It's like, well, if you're going to bring yes. that up, then like explain some of that. Right. But he doesn't at all. Artie was disgusted that I would constantly lose my checks. We had gotten paid for a Bar 51 gig in San Diego, and Artie said, John, I think you dropped something. There on the hotel lobby floor was a check for 5000 Artie banged the hottest groupie that night. <laughs> I left that in there because he literally just transitioned into something completely different. I like turtles. <laughs> yeah. I dropped the check on the floor. Artie saw it. I picked it up. End of story. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. It's wow. pretty compelling that stuff. Is, that is probably the worst paragraph ever written. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there. Well, there's more. <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's see if we can beat it. So then he goes on to talk about getting a cashier's check from some gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is so obnoxious. University. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to get a new cashier's check from a university? Shit. Shit. <laughs> I, oh, gu- I guess that's how hard it is. <laughs> All of a sudden, he has a new personality. I was like, Shit. Yeah. Never yeah, heard him say wire. that ever. Yeah. Oh, he does a great he's on Forrest the wire Gump. All of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to wow. hear the Forrest Gump impression? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have that one, too. Let me just see. It's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it right here. If you like Gomer Pyle. Yeah. This became a typical Artie. One day, he's your best friend, and the next day, he's a complete asshole. His personality with heroin was like a box of chocolates. You never know which one you're going to get. He does these impersonations. I swear, you would think it was the real people. (laughs) Did he get Tom Hanks in there? (laughs) Yeah. In the studio to do that? Amazing. Uncanny. (laughs) Wow. Wow. He's so bad at so many things. It's hard. It's hard to be this bad at everything you do. (laughs) We should have had a dabby for worst impression. We fucked up. Oh shit! You're right. I yeah. didn't even think about that. Next year. Next year. Yeah, the <laughs> Dabby 24. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. So then he's talking about how Artie did something. He got really drunk at a show one weekend, and so they went back and they're on the air Monday morning. And Artie comes on. And he's goofing on. I'm sorry. John comes on. And he's goofing on Artie for being drunk, but he also drank orange juice with maggots in it. Yeah. Yeah, so he's no. telling that story too. Mm-hmm. His point is that he's killing it in the studio. Right. It's just the greatest segment to ever happen on, on Howard. <laughs> this whole segment lasted an hour. All in the studio and in the E control room were laughing their asses off. <laughs> Nobody has an ass left. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> the whole Howard Stern show was assless. Right. <laughs> Stuttering John went there and made everyone laugh so fucking hard. Yeah. He hospitalized everybody. <laughs> he just left a trail of, of legs and assholes with nothing <laughs> yeah. around it. I laughed the shit out of my butt, which is something I do <laughs> yeah. all the time. Right into the, <laughs> right into the toilet. Wow. <laughs> so apparently... John's segment was so amazing Mm -hmm. that everyone in the E-Crew was laughing, everyone in the studio was laughing. What John doesn't realize is that Howard is who makes him funny. Mm -hmm. Because John, I've seen him try to be funny many times when Howard's not around, Mm -hmm. and it never works. No. No, that's that's Howard's gift is bringing out the funny things in not just other people, but just in the situation. Correct. Or at least just ripping on you to your face. Honestly, oh, I am a huge Howard fan. I've listened to tons of Howard, as everybody knows. But I have more and more respect for the guy. The more I listen to Grillo and <laughs> Mike Ganji and Sutter and John yeah. have conversations with each other, just like, holy shit, I would fire out these people. They're like, Did he didn't pay me enough. I'm like, well, he didn't, shouldn't have paid you anything. You guys are devoid of talent. This is terrible. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another one for, with, uh, with Artie. Apparently... He went back and listened to that segment that I just described where everyone was mm-hmm. laughing their asses off. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we went, he went back and checked it out like on YouTube or something recently mm. and wanted to let John know what he thought about it. Recently, Artie texted me that he finally listened to it and he laughed his ass off. <laughs> I mean, I got, honestly, I can't make this shit up. I'm doing this in order. I'm not like skipping around to find the parts where he says someone laughed their ass off. At what point do you try to find a different description? All right. 
Right. Yes. Wow. Like Opa used to always say we were howling. We were howling. Oh. It was so funny. And then someone finally called him out. He's like, I gotta stop saying that. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like sometimes you say shit over and over again. Someone's just gonna call you out. But like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, we were we, we we were pissing ourselves. We were yeah, uh, yeah. other things you could say. I liked it. Oof. It was a jovial time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> other ways to describe that. Good times were had by all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now Let's get to the Pittsburgh story. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, so the owner of a club in Pittsburgh had some comments, I guess. This sounds like a fifth grader recounting their summer vacation, right? You come in in September, you're like, oh, Billy, get up here. What did you do? After each of our sets, the guy always had a little annoying quip to Artie. You're a regular whippersnapper up there. To Nick, you're a thunderbolt up there. The guy was a tool. The place was sold out. In fact, they added a sixth show because of the demand. It's just random shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went to the beach and my friend Billy was there. And then my mom went grocery shopping. (laughs) And why was that guy a tool? I mean, those are are two good things. It wasn't like he was saying you're pieces of shit. (laughs) You may have been thinking it. It, It's funny, Mike, because I was like, Sometimes I know I'm going to clip something before I even hear it. So I was already like ready to clip it. And he's like, this guy, he's saying all this shit. And then he gives two examples. They're both like right. nonsense. Right. And then he moves on. You're a thunderbolt. Well, here's, here's what's unspoken is he did say something to John. And it was not, you're a, a pistol or you're a whippersnapper. It was like, yeah, you should be out of the business. <laughs> you're yeah. not a comedian. As yeah. Nick DiPaolo yeah. tells him later on, it's a little... Uh, Foreshadowing. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> Coming yeah. up. Because why else would the guy be a tool? You could just say he was eccentric. He was a weirdo. But yeah. why a tool? Because a, he said something question. negative to John. Yeah. Which, by the way, anytime that John embarrasses himself, it doesn't make it into the book. Or, as we'll learn from the last chapter we're covering today, he rewrites history because he talks about his appearance on the Artie Lang podcast with Tammy Pascatelli that I've listened to multiple times. We all have. Yeah, we have it memorized. Yes, and John has some revisionist history oh, yeah. when it comes to that. That's very interesting <laughs> stuff that I was like, I was like, all right, am I going to still listen to this book? Is there more clips? I'm like, oh, shit. It's the oh, most yeah. interesting chapter yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's really building. It really is. You know, Maddox's book I got really bored with. It just got, it just dragged and dragged. This book, I don't want it to end. I'm going to be very sad when we get to the end of this book. It's going to be a bummer. All right, so apparently um, Modi, the comedian that now John says is one of the most brilliant comics ever, and he can't believe he's not a star, and that John didn't turn him into a star. Apparently Modi is um, bisexual. Okay. Which is important because of this amazing joke from Nick DiPaolo that I have a feeling that Nick would tell you was better than this. She ended up sleeping with Modi, the one we thought was bisexual. Oh, the shit Nick gave him the next day. I see you're spreading the AIDS again, hook nose. <laughs> hmm. Is that what Nick said? <laughs> I see you're spreading I'm... the AIDS again, hook nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody said that. It might not have been Nick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've seen Nick do comedy. He's very funny. I doubt he said yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like an Obi joke. It kind of does. It sounds, it sounds like a John joke. Yeah. It sounds like John just wanted to. Something crafted by John. Yeah. I just wanted to let him know how much, how Jewy he looks again or something. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. So now I'm happy to report mm-hmm. that John is going to finally brag about himself oh. in this book. Mm. I know. I've been waiting for it. Yeah. He's finally yeah. going to let us know. The greatest improv line he's ever come up with. Oh, yes. Ever. <laughs> and this is something else. I had the best improv line ever that night, too. I was doing crowd work, and I asked a guy in the front row what he did for a living. He told me that he worked for Coke. And without skipping a beat, I told him, so does Artie. The crowd loved it. The crowd <laughs> loved it. Were they <laughs> laughing their asses off? <laughs> I don't think We that laughed happened. our asses off. I don't think that guy would say Coke. He'd say Coca-Cola. He might say Coke, but even, you know, it's a it's a fun, clever improv line. It's, sure. it's Listen, it's, yeah. you're, you're not going to the Comedy Hall of Fame with that, okay? No. A, I'm no. not writing a book about it either. <laughs> yeah, a chapter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crowd, chapter 12, crowd work. <laughs> you guys should have seen me. <laughs> you would have you been so proud. You guys fucking. <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> All right, so then John makes a brilliant observation that's never been observed before. Mm. Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. It's known as like pretty mean fans. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, they yeah. threw snowballs at Santa Claus. They Tough once crowds. Yeah, they, they once are, cheered they are... for an injury from a, a opposing player, which right. is not something that you normally do. We all know the Bill Burr thing where he came out and right. they're all booing and jeering him and he ended up winning them over. This, this is what Philly's known for. Yeah. But they're also known as the city of brotherly love. <laughs> Glad you brought that up. So, so John <laughs> figures out a joke here. Uh-oh. The city of brotherly love my ass. Boom. Hot take. Good one, John. <laughs> My ass. <laughs> Finally, someone connected those two dots together. <laughs> yeah. It's about time. <laughs> Been waiting for that. Wow. Wow. I'm glad you got that in print form, too. By so the way, tickets are on sale. Of... I'll be in Philadelphia with Dick Masterson, producer Chris, and a bunch of other people on April 22nd. And if you go to live.dick.show, you can get your tickets. Nice. Yeah. They were on sale today. And Dick put it out before I did. We've already sold a bunch of tickets. Oh wow! It's gonna be all cool. fucking. That's great. Dickheads in the front, in the front rows. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! So get on there, get your tickets for that. All right. This is now where Nick lets John know that he's not a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> it was God time for me. the show to start, and Nick decided it was a good time to tell me that I was not a comedian. Not meaning that I sucked. I had just started, but I didn't make a living at it like he does. What a pep talk from the cuisine of mean. Maybe he was just trying to prepare me for the fans. Or maybe he drank some truth serum and wanted yeah. to let you know that you're not a comedian. Right. It's also and possible. You suck. Yeah. yeah. He goes, yeah. he wasn't trying to say I wasn't funny. Oh, no, I bet he was. Yeah. I bet that's exactly what he was trying to say. <laughs> that's exactly what he When someone doing. says you're not a comedian before you get up on stage to do comedy. Yeah. They're letting you know you're not funny. <laughs> yeah, there's no layers to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a very nuanced point from Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> what he meant was, I am funny. A little too funny. <laughs> what he, he meant was, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a comedian's comedian. <laughs> wow. Who are these